We're going to talk a little bit about double threat position. In my opinion, one of the most important parts and most undertaught parts of the game. The double threat position is called double threat because you're in a position to dodge and feed. Triple threats where you can shoot or dodge and feed. Double threat, on the other hand, is a dodging posture that you can feed from. A dodging posture that's a very athletic position. It allows you to be explosive. You're trying to get as close to your man as you can, just outside of his cross check, so that you eliminate his cushion. It's a very deceptive posture because it looks like you're dodging, and yet you're in a position to feed. It looks like you're dodging so you can back defenders off and sometimes get yourself in a position to shoot. Your dodging posture sets up your fakes really well because it makes automatic double fakes. Double fakes always work better than single fakes. So when all of a sudden you're jabbing and it looks like you're dodging and then you pull your hands up to look like you're feeding, you can get people to jump all over your fakes. It allows you to manipulate defenders in your two-man game. It allows you to manipulate sliders. It's truly a basketball type of position. Your Kyrie Irving is in a double threat, what I would call double threat position, getting as close to Steph Curry as he possibly can. The double threat family has a bunch of different dodges. Obviously, first you got to square up, but you got to get as close to your man as you can. Drift dodges is when you shuffle and use shuffle hesitations to try to beat your guy using under splits or swims or toe drags to go against the grain. Your slide dodge is where you literally try to get your man's feet to stop and use jab steps to try to get his feet to in balance to shift so you can get a step. And your punch move is where you're going to use a jab step and a punch hesitation. Here, Rob Pinnell is using a drift dodge to beat his man. He's shuffling using shuffle hesitations and a quick little under split to set up his dive. Here, Chris Cloutier is getting as close to his man as he possibly can. See how he chops his feet and he gets so close that he's able to turn the corner on his guy and there's nothing his man can do about it. He's not known as a speed guy, but he beats his man cleanly enough to make an S dodge out. Here, Ethan Walker, same thing. He's got a long pole on him. He's getting as close to his guy as he can little hesitation, and he's able to turn the corner and get the angle he wants. This is called a slide dodge. This is where you try to get your man's feet actually to stop. Watch how close the attacker gets, and he's able to turn the corner. You know you've turned the corner when you can throw the ball to X with your inside hand. Watch this play in the national semifinal a couple of years ago. Zach Miller from Denver, a box player, gets so close to his guy, Gets topside, swims, comes back, draws the slide, game winner. It's really hard for defenders to guard it, and they can't see it coming, unlike long dodges. Watch Sean Evans chop his feet and beat his man so cleanly. And why? He's so close to his guy that when he makes his move, his guy tries to jack him, but he's just outside of his ability to jack him and he's able to cleanly turn the corner to the middle. And that's tight space. And here's Kyrie Irving. He's the master of the double threat position. And I put this in here because I want you guys to understand that dodging in lacrosse can be like dodging in basketball. So how do you get into your double threat? One is you can approach the defense. If the defense is going to pick you up soft, you can approach while you're surveying. Here, Austin Stats realizes that there's a topside seal and he's going to get his shot off. You can also catch and get your man to approach you in your double threat, which is awesome because if they over-approach you, if they don't respect you, you're in such a great athletic posture here that you're going to blow right by them like they're not even there. And the last way is that you can bounce out to the perimeter. So if you're getting overplayed and you want to reset, you can pull people away, bounce and re-square and pull them out as Sean Evans does right here. Now let's talk a little bit about your double threat and two-man game. 
Watch here how Kyrie Irving uses his double threat first to manipulate his own man and then to manipulate the switch. So instead of just blasting off this pick shoulder to shoulder, he's operating in such a way that he's going to get his man caught on the pick, and then he actually slows down and stops, cuts his own man off, and then he squares up to the switch using a hesitation to get right to the net. Here you're going to see Peter Baum similarly using his double threat to set his man up for the pick. The difference in this case, of course, is that it's a big little situation, so they don't want to switch off Baum. He gets close enough to his guy to guarantee a step. He gets the angle perfectly set so he knows he's going to be able to beat his man to the pick because they're not switching. They're going under. And he swims right over and causes an impossible angle for the defender to catch up. Here you're going to see Austin Stats using his double threat to really operate in the two-man. Watch how he gets both guys on a string at one time. He's got his man and the switch, and then his man and the switch. So this is the idea of being able to manipulate both guys from your double threat. And you'll notice that Stats actually – raises his stick a little bit and starts to use not only double threat, but the combination of fakes as well. This that subtle little lift of his hands right there gets people running away from him, gets people attacking him. And then next thing you know, he's got two on him and he moves the ball perfectly. Feeding from a double threat is great because it's a dodging posture. It looks like you're going to the goal and it gives you a window of time. Here, Rob Pinnell knows Joe Walters is going to be open. And notice how he stays in a dodging posture so as to disguise his desire to feed. If he lifts his hands up into a passing posture, like a collarbone position, that defender will get all over him. Feeding from the double threat position is what makes it double threat. It's a dodging posture from which you can feed. Here you're going to see Jordan Wolf blow by his guy, draw the switch, and get right into his double threat dodging posture and move the ball quickly from it. Here you're going to see Sean Evans approaching his man in, a, in his double threat position, keeping his eyes up on the crease, and you're going to see the man in the middle popping to, to an open spot where his stick can receive a pass, and Evans is not giving anything away. Many times in your double threat position, you will back defenders off because they think you're dodging, and then you can pull up and shoot. Ethan Walker does that right here. Look how he's approaching. Look how his defender is backing off. Walker knows he wants to shoot, but he's not going to sell shot until the last moment. Watch Tahoka do the same thing right here in a box game. He approaches, 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 and then shoots right from his double threat. He pulls it back because he's basically trying to back his man off so he can disguise a shot. Two fakes always works better than one. And in this case, you've got a jab, you've got a dodging fake, and you've got a shooting passing fake. And the second fakes makes people react. This is a really interesting one. This is Lyle Thompson receiving a ball and shooting a screenshot. Doesn't look like there's much double threat being used here, but it's very subtle. Notice how he catches the ball. And when he catches it, he doesn't wind up right away. He brings his stick down as he squares up to his guy. And he quickly brings it back to a windup by, by bringing it into his double threat posture, his dodging posture. He backs his guy off. And then he can pull it right back to shoot a screenshot. Very subtle, similar to a basketball player catching the ball and doing a jab step as they're pulling up for their jumper. Double threat position is a must for everybody's game. I hope you have a better understanding of why it's so important. Next, we'll get into all the details of every move and how to work on them.